Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. There are some things about Destiny PvP that a lot of players don't like. One of the biggest things right now are single shot tube grenade launchers, breach launchers, and I'm positive you've been seeing them, and the reason you've been seeing them is because of the Wither Horde catalyst. Bungie does this from time to time, they can do this, throw weapons within the meta by quest. We saw it with Komodo, there were a lot of Arbalists that season, and this season we've been mainly seeing Mountaintop. And you might be wondering, why are we talking about Mountaintop when this is a Truth Teller review? I believe that this Truth Teller has such a special quality that in theory, it should be the one seen after Mountaintop gets sunset. And I also think it's really important to differentiate just how pinnacle Mountaintop is with the rest of these launchers that are within this class. Because even though it's a single shot tube launcher, Mountaintop is mainly different because of two things. Number one being micro missile, making it fire in a straight line at extreme velocity. And the second thing is the frame. Mountaintop has a lightweight frame. And that frame is like the ones that you would see on a spare rations or other lightweight weapons. Superb handling, move faster while this weapon is equipped. Now, Truth Teller is Void Energy. It also has a lightweight frame, but it's to the grenade launcher class. One shot handheld grenade launcher with remote detonation, fire, release to detonate. I think that this class of launcher hasn't been used too much, and I think most players that do use these breach styles are coming from Mountaintop. It's kind of apples to apples, but not, because they perform really differently. Mountaintop's getting ready to be sunset, so another reason I wanted to make this video is that I wouldn't be surprised if Micro Missile gets an adjustment, and while I'm on that subject, I wouldn't be surprised if these tube launchers get an adjustment overall, specifically not being able to one-hit kill. I always like to think in the future, and that's why with today's video, I want to talk about this certain truth teller role, why it's so unique. I wouldn't steer you wrong with these things, there's a lot of value here. It's a role that even if a nerf does come, it's going to perform the exact same. I'm going to showcase that through gameplay, what this role is all about, where I feel it has strengths, and when these truth tellers start to fall to you in the general loot pool from various sources, you can try it out if you want. The role I want to talk about today is the Disruption Break Truth Teller. There are a couple things I prefer on it. Number one, quick launch for increased projectile speed. You want it to get there quickly. The second thing, as far as the magazine grenade, three main options are proximity grenades, spike grenades, and concussion grenades. I'm going to give a brief overview on what to expect from the barrels and the magazine selections, but I, I really want to get into the role. There are a ton of interactions with what launcher barrel you use with the grenade magazine type. All of them can work, but again, I do prefer velocity to pair with Disruption Break to get it there quickly. The interactions result in different things. Some of them are a one-hit kill, others are not. Another thing to consider, again, this is a hold and release grenade launcher. They can bounce, you can release it after a bounce and make them explode where you want. So a lot of grenade options can work. A spike grenade states that you get increased damage on direct hits. With these launchers, it can be a one-hit kill. You combine spike with a barrel that gives more blast radius or velocity, it can one-hit kill no matter what. There's concussion grenades, same thing. These are also a one-hit kill when you hit them with a direct impact. There are some though that don't do a one hit kill. As an example, the proximity grenades. These grenades fired have increased proximity detonation but decreased blast radius. And you might be wondering, why would I want to use this if it's not even going to one hit kill? That's what this video is about. Note that right here I'm doing 169 with quick launch on the barrel. When I change it to confined launch for more of a blast radius, it does 175. I'll talk more about proximity in a moment, not worried about it at all. To pair with Disruption Break, I have Underdog. When low health, I get a faster reload. Ideally, you want auto-loading holster right here. Next would be Field Prep, then Underdog. Disruption Break states, breaking an enemy shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. Here's what to learn about Disruption Break in PvP. When you break shields, you deal 50% more damage with your kinetic weapon. Hit them with the perk, they're vulnerable to kinetic damage for 5 seconds. That's huge, 5 seconds is a long time in game. Not only for you, but for any teammate, they can get a line of sight on this enemy. Enemy. There are only two grenade launchers in the entire game that have Disruption Break. One of them is a heavy, Behringer's Memory. The other one's this Truth Teller. This Disruption Break Truth Teller is a perfect primer for big damage dealing primaries. And it does get interesting with your primary of choice. Because not only does it work really well in group play with multiple enemies, but it's also great for 1v1s. I see a lot of people in the Crucible to this day lead with Mountaintop, then follow it right up with something like Recluse. You're doing the same thing here, you're leading with Truth Teller, and it has on quick access sling, so you can switch to your primary. And with some examples, and also why I prefer proximity grenades, while well, yes, even though you're the one that releases and judges where the grenade's actually going to go off and detonate, with something like spike grenades, I notice that the splash damage it's doing is below the threshold for what Disruption Break needs. Something to know is that the grenade needs to do 120 damage to break the shields. So a number like 90, 107, 117 isn't going to do it. It needs to be 120 and above. That's the number you're going to be paying attention to. And for whatever reason, proximity grenades feels like it's getting more damage on grenades that are away from my target. And again, this doubles for groups. When enemies are together, you shoot this grenade into them, you, they can all be hit with it over 
over 120 damage, and all have that 5 second timer where a primary can just melt them. I suggest to play around with what you like, I do prefer high velocity with proximity, cause it could even be close range, it could be far range. You lead with the launcher, break the shields, bring out the primary, and even long distance ones, getting 50% more damage on your primary really helps cleanups when you definitely are in fall off. It's from any kinetic source, so in 6v6 everyone on your team can do that damage to them. And you might be thinking, so far, if you land 120 damage, they're really close to death anyways. If you land the full 169 from proximity grenades, they're definitely close. Well, yes, that's a good point, but there are multiple scenarios where a worm husk can get health back. A warlock can pop a riff. They can rotate away from you. Like in the beginning, I hit a warlock with this disruption break grenade launcher. I hit the threshold for the damage number, and another enemy came right in front of me, so I got them down. I reloaded with kill clip. The whole time, that warlock has been vulnerable to kinetic damage. Well, I downed this other player, they popped a rift over here, they came out near max health, I had 50% more damage from destruction break and kill clip on top of that for this bygones. I landed a hefty 177 damage burst to the face, and this is where I find a lot of value, especially with the Wormhus Hunters. You're gonna notice throughout this gameplay what you've been seeing, like the Bygones has Kill Clip, you've seen Loud Lullaby. It has multi-kill clip, and with this hand cannon, it can two-tap with multi-kill clip. You're gonna see Ace of Spades, there's Thorn. The idea is that you get this easy primer to get the easy cleanup, and then get to your damage dealing primary. Last week I took a friend of my wife through trials, here's the deal, they both wanted pinnacle gear to help with ranking up and power level, both of them were about 1007 light. All the enemies that we faced were 1050 and above, so a severe light level disadvantage. With a weapon like Ace, so it would have to be a 4 shot, a 5 shot kill. So I used this truth teller, I told them to stay close to me, let's work as a team, and it didn't matter because I was boosting their damage by 50%, so their light level was kind of null and void. And even in trials, like, don't feel uncomfortable in a 1v1, it's very strong there too. Even when someone's right in your face and rushing because you release and hold, the direct impact's gonna do 169, quick swap, and a lot of times it's just a body shot from there. In Thorn's case, it does 64 to the body, and what's nice about Thorn, it also has the burn damage, it does 101 to the head, but after you do this quick and easy grenade launcher swap, get the Thorn kill, you just go grab the soul, and then you have the buffed Thorn damage. I do the same thing with Ace. Throw the disruption break shot, easy cleanup for Ace of Spades, get Memento Mori going, and then just go. Depending on what primary you use, like Back to Loud Lullaby, 110s do 75 to the body, so most of the time with that one, at a good distance, it's just a body shot away. Then you would see me reload, get multi-kill clip, and start two-tapping. And what I found is that this grenade launcher with disruption break makes you have a very high upkeep of really good damage dealing perks on your primary. I pair it with Kill Clip mostly, we've talked about Ace and Thorn, but it has so much utility. Even at a distance, sometimes I'll let it bounce off the ground or off the wall into them and just kind of judge it, time it, release, let it detonate, and clean up. Like Bygones for a burst does 87 to the body, it's crazy. So with whatever weapon, I get the reload and then start chaining together the primary kills. And I just want to bring up again, some of you are going to value the one hit kill potential from Spike. It doesn't happen as near as often as you would like, and it's nowhere near what Mountaintop can do. So that's why I've chosen Proximity. For this method of using it. And the thing to remember about the 169 from proximity grenades is that if they take pretty much any damage from any source, it could be a hand cannon body shot, it could be an SMG headshot, the 169 is going to pretty much one shot them. If you have charge with light, the proximity launcher will one shot, especially like at start of games. That's where it's amazing because a lot of people rush in together. There's a part in the beginning of the video where I did it on retribution and everyone that I hit went down. But something like right here, I have a high impact pulse. I shot it, it hit two players, it does 47 per bullet, 141 per burst, and after that, I get kill clip and just start going. It's really something you have to try out, it's very special. It might seem niche, but it's extremely powerful. You have to kind of see it to believe it in your own hands. Because once you start using it, getting comfortable, close quarters like shotgun range, it's literally just a shoot, swap, easy cleanup. I've gone flawless two weeks in a row with Truth Teller and Disruption Break. And another thing about it, especially in trials, and your teammates know that you have this and you deal 120 damage, you can call them out like, hey, the Warlock is hit with Disruption Break. Which, by the way, if you haven't been noticing, it's kind of like a suppression symbol over them. That way, if they're in position, they can get an angle they know that they're going to be melted with their primary weapon, their kinetic. I bring this to you because I found it be extremely powerful, and if anything gets nerfed, this will perform the same. If they nerf one-hit kills from these grenade launchers, this is still going to be doing exactly what I talked about today. As long as the grenade can still hit for 120 damage, it's gold. Once you get comfortable with it, the better you become with it, and you start remembering things like it bounces, and you start using that to your advantage for cleanups and one-hit kills off of walls. It's very baseline today for Truth Teller as far as a review, but I wanted to talk about this very specific perk on this grenade launcher. And honestly, the only thing you really need is Disruption Break, because you can work with the barrels, you can work with the mag option, you can work with the first perk because it's a hold and release. 
And ultimately, videos like this are kind of weird because I know a lot of players haven't really been too fond of these grenade launchers lately, but I do think that this is a gem. This is one that has something very unique and no other ones are like it. So if one falls to you, I think that if you use it how I talked about today, you're going to understand why. So be on the lookout. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. There's a link down below and you can use my code COOL at checkout for a discount. So with these grenade launchers, what are your thoughts? There are other options for True Teller, like Multi-Kill Clip, like Swashbuckler. They can be really good PvE-centered perks, and roles like that will probably be the mountaintop PvE replacement. That might be for a video in the future. Those perks can also work in the Crucible as well. It's going to depend on you, the player, and what you like to do. So let's talk about this role down below with Disruption Break. I really do feel like you would need to test it out for yourself to get the full picture. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.